was the way I had this real clarity around. I thought I wanted to communicate something to my family members, like the adult family members, around just the present buying. Thought, this is just this is time for something different, you know, like where we just buy things for one another, like that people don't even want. It was just like this is, and we spend time. It was like this is crazy, you know. So I thought I felt really clear. I thought no. so. I'm on the phone to my my aunt, and I noticed this like trembling as I'm talking. I was like. Just kind of almost like this thing of stepping out of the normal, the known way of... And I noticed she was like, at me. Wow, that's a bit early to be... It was only Christmas yesterday to be talking about, like... <laughs> and it kind of like... I, I think I've got a question in there somewhere around... Um, just the idea around... I think like sometimes I misuse the idea in the course about, like, I am responsible. As you go on the spiritual journey and, and you, you want to be authentic and you want to face these things and and let these things express through you, but, but for me the, the question that was very helpful uh, that I would get from the Spirit a lot of times would be like, it would be coming through into my mind, like who, who am I really trying to convince here? You know, sometimes he thinks the ego protests too much, sometimes I, I would take like a stand, like, okay, I'm just going to be as non-compromising as Jesus is, not a shred of compromise and everything. But ultimately, what I found with that was, was that it was such a training in, in mind-watching, in, in going deep inside and finding that stillness, and just letting the Spirit guide and direct me, you know, to where I could bestow my miracles. Because Jesus says, you know, I will guide you, I will tell you where to bestow your miracles. And when things start to just blow up in my face, or just come right at me, and come right at me over and over and over, I'd say, you know, am I like missing something here? Is this, you know, is this the way it's supposed to go? And it was, it was always this gentle presence saying, let me direct where you bestow your miracles. I will direct you. And it was far, far beyond the, the biological family. I mean, this just carried me all around the world and to places where I could go on television or go on radio shows and just be myself. And it would just be easy, like I would attract into my awareness these talk show hosts or these, these people that would be open-minded and curious and we would have these great lively discussions, not antagonistic at all. You know, just, I've never been on any kind of radio show or television show where it was kind of an antagonism there. I know it's just been such a gradual thing where I wasn't going to try to push, push this on anybody. You know, I'll sit there in my hermitage in the, in the woods of wherever it was, Michigan or Kentucky, before I'll go and try to push it on anyone. And then when the invitation started to come, it was like Jesus saying, I'll go before you and make straight your path. You know, I will bestow those miracles where there are those who have the ears to hear it. And, and it takes a lot of surrender for that to happen. Otherwise, you know, you, you tend to find something flaring up here or flaring up there or in your face. Um, I know with Gary Renard, you know, at the very beginning, after after Disappearance in the Universe was just published at the very beginning, he went on a national, a very syndicated, very popular uh, talk show, radio talk show in the United States called Coast to Coast. And I think the best way to describe that interview or that that radio host was would be antagonistic. Uh, the the interviewer became furious with Gary uh, during the the interview, absolutely livid at him, because Gary kept using one word that was just like this major trigger for the host. Every time Gary would use this one word, the host would just flip out in anger and just zap, 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 projection, projection, and then the word was oneness. <laughs> It wasn't Jesus or something, or Moses or something like that. It was oneness. <laughs> <laughs> so flip out and and then 
And what Gary did was he he would have to go inside with it and and just really pray and pray and pray and pray before he would respond. And he did say that a lot of people in his travels, because it was so it was broadcast so far and wide that people would come up even years after that interview and say, I remember you on Coast to Coast. Oh man, what an interview. But there would be reflections and comments that would come back like, well, you really practice what you preach. You know, you really, that guy was attacking you left and right and you just didn't, you just didn't defend yourself. And so those were like reflections that would come down the road. And, and really that's, it doesn't matter what the, what the situation is or how extreme the situation is, it's always an opportunity to practice your, your forgiveness, you know. I mean, he did have to go right into prayer when these seeming words were being fired and so on and so forth, you know. And he did, did say afterwards, he said to the Holy Spirit, Jesus, thanks a lot, you know. <laughs> thanks for that setup, like that was a, a real setup. But, but it actually did get, get used subsequently. I think for me, it's been, it's been like this gradual sense of, of of really not trying to make anything happen, not trying to make anything up, not trying to stir something up or, you know, anything like that. It's been this, just this focus on my mind and my, my state of mind and my process within. And then after years of that, then, then the invitations started to come, like just like cascading invitations, more invitations than I could possibly handle and just being very prayerful and intuitive about which ones of those to accept. And I do feel that that's been an example to me of what Jesus taught, you know, talking about the Holy Spirit. He will go before you, making straight your path and leaving in your way no stones to trip on, no obstacles to bar your way, not one seeming difficulty but will melt away before you reach it. You need to take thought for nothing except the only purpose you would fulfill. There's a gentleness to that. It's not like trying to steamroll through, like like you're the bull in the china shop, trying to get through the china shop as fast as you can by knocking all the fine china flying and cracking everywhere, but really like, like gliding through in a very soft, easy way. And uh, I don't know, I, I just sense that there, there was really something to that that gentleness, you know, that I was, I would have to be very, very patient with myself. So it's like humility. Yeah. And it was always like, who are you trying to convince? <laughs>